Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome to Life Nation, our Sunday Dialogue. If you're with me for the first time, I'm Shante Charles, founding, <clears throat> co-founding pastor of Life Nation. I want to welcome you with us today. If you have been with us, I want to welcome you back. If you are a partner, I want to say welcome to you. And we pray that everyone is having a wonderful day, a safe day. And we're going to jump right into the message on today. We're going to get started with some prayer. And then we're going to move right into today's message. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness one to another. We thank you for your truth. We thank you, God, for removing every single block into our minds, into our spirit, into our soul, into our heart, both those that are self-inflicted and those that are coming from external ways. And we ask, God, that you cleanse our hearts, cleanse our minds, help us to focus today, help us to receive your word in truth and in spirit. Father God, help me to deliver your word the way that you have designed for it to be delivered. Remove anything, Father, in my soul, in my spirit, man, anything, God, that would become an obstruction to your word on today. Father, I ask that you just remove it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for peace. We thank you for calm. We thank you for tranquility. We thank you for who you are in our lives. And Father, we just magnify your name and we bless you, God. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being housed within us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us, that leads us and guides us into all truth, all knowledge, all wisdom, all understanding. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are moving into a new series this afternoon, and that series is Moving in Mastery. Now, if you have been a part of my other broadcast on the Daring Dialogues page, we began to touch on this series very briefly and talking about some things that you can do to move in mastery as we continue um, learning, as we continue growing, as we continue developing our mind, our hearts, our spirits. And um, so this is the full presentation of some of the things that the Lord was sharing with me then. And I'm excited because he has lots to say to us and lots to share with us. Now, I don't believe I'm going to be long today, um, but you never know with the Holy Spirit. So um, I don't intend to be long, I'll say it that way. We're gonna be looking at, as we go through this first uh, set of lessons, we're gonna be looking at the life of Joseph. So we're gonna be starting in Genesis 39. So if you have your word, whether by tablet or phone or physical text, you can go with me to Genesis 39, and we're going to be reading Genesis 39, 1 through 6. Genesis 39, 1 through 6. And if you want to put that on the screen, you can do so. If you want to type notes today onto the screen, you could do so, so that those who are catching the replay, they can come back and view those notes. All right. So today, our first thing that we're going to be talking about in terms of moving in mastery we're going to be focusing on the word emanate, emanate. I want you to keep that word in mind as we read on today. I'm going to read the text through twice. I'm going to read it in the Holman Christian Standard first, and then I'm going to come back and read it in the King James Version. Genesis 39, 1 through 6. Now Joseph had been taken to Egypt, an Egyptian named Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and the captain of the guard bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him there. The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man, serving in the household of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made everything he did successful, Joseph found favor in his master's sight 
and became his personal attendant. Potiphar also put him in charge of his household and placed all that he owned under his authority. From the time that he had put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. The Lord's blessing was on all that he owned in his house and in his fields. He left all that he owned under Joseph's authority. He did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. Let's read from the KJV. Same verses, Genesis 39, if you're joining us for the um, right now, Genesis 39, verses 1 through 6. Now we're reading it in the KJV. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had put into his hand. And it came to pass from that time he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Now, let's dig. <laughs> so we're talking about moving in mastery. And the first thing that the Lord said to me so very clearly, he said, in order to move in mastery, some of you are going to have to master being mastered. You're going to have to master being mastered. I would also subtitle this an officer and a gentleman. I would also uh, subtitle this the main thing that we're going to be talking about with Joseph, and that is to emanate, to emanate. So Joseph, a prince of Israel, has been brought down to a place. He's been brought down to a person. He's been bought of the hands of the Ishmaelites. He's been delivered into slavery of the hands of his fellow brothers. And as I was reading this, the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, many of you are expecting to be brought down by what you don't know. You're expecting to be displaced by a strange thing. You're expecting to be sold out by strangers, but none of that was true for Joseph. None of that was true for him. And so he really dealt with me about, you know, being aware and not thinking that it's going to be something that you're unfamiliar with that can bring you into a place of bondage, that can bring you into a place of captivity, being aware and not thinking that it's going to be something that you don't know or that you're not familiar with. And then we have to remember that Joseph's name, the Holy Spirit brought back to my remember, remembrance, Joseph's name means God who adds the increase. That's his name. That is, your name is your essence, okay? Your name is, tells a little bit about who you are and what your purpose is and what you're supposed to be doing in the earth. Um, I know a lot of people may not associate their name with that, but your name very much talks about your character. So when your parents put a name on you or when God puts a name on you, all right, it's going to speak to your purpose. So even if your parents named you something that maybe they didn't intend for you to fulfill, you may very well wind up fulfilling that thing because of what they have named you because names have power and words are spiritual containers. So Joseph's father names him God who's going to add the increase, even though his mother, we know, wanted to name him son of my sorrow. 
Obviously, his father intervenes and preempts the name that he would have been walking in, okay, and gave him a name that would speak to his future. God is going to add the increase, okay? So Joseph was sent to Potiphar, a man who had things, I want you to get this, a man who had things but not wealth. He was a man who was in charge. He was an officer. Yes, he had grounds. Yes, he had land. But obviously there was something missing. Why do I say that? Because God sends Joseph or God sends increase into Potiphar's house. So he who adds the increase was sent to a place that had some sort of deficit. Potiphar maybe didn't know, okay, that he was lacking in increase until increase showed up. Because sometimes we think we have what we need until that thing shows up. So he buys Joseph out of the hand of the traders, okay? And all of a sudden, what does he see? He sees increase. But remember, he's already a wealthy man, but he sees increase. And so as I was reading this, I couldn't help but think to myself, you know, we keep asking, the Lord said to me, we keep asking the wrong questions. And I was like, what do you mean we keep asking the wrong questions? He said, sometimes you all ask, why am I here? He said, that's the wrong question. He said, we need to be asking what am I sent for? What am I sent for? Not why are you here, but what are you sent for? In Joseph's case, what was he sent there to do? What was he sent there to increase? Because remember, God sends him on. He, his name means God who's going to increase. So what is Joseph being sent there to increase? Okay, so he said, get it, get it out of your mind, asking him, why am I here? Ask him, what am I sent here for? What am I sent here for? And that's going to be key as you continue to move through this season. What am I sent here for? The sooner you know what you're sent here for, it provides clarity in the direction in which you're supposed to go. For example, for me, my name means peace, calm, and tranquility. God doesn't send me to places that already have those things. I have finally figured this out. <laughs> okay? So, <clears throat> I would often say, why am I here? What am I doing here? Why is there complete chaos in this space? And it became clearer to me once I began to focus on, well, what my name means, if my name means peace, calm, and tranquility, he's going to send me to places that don't have it. All right. So the question is, what is your essence? What is actually emanating from you? Have you discovered your essence or as some might say your aura or as some might say your vibe or as some might say your energy? Or as the Holy Spirit said to me, your emanation. <laughs> what is your emanation? What is your essence? What is supposed to be flowing out of you? Because what was flowing out of Joseph was increase. He was prosperous. He was brought down, but he was prosperous. All right. So what is emanation? It is an abstract but perceive or perceptible thing or perceived thing that issues from a source is abstract, but I can perceive it. When someone says to you, I don't know what it is, but there's something about you. What they're talking about is your essence. They're talking about what emanates out of you. They're talking about what flows out of you. And sometimes people can identify your essence before you can identify it. But we want to get better at identifying our own. Amen. So 
it is the source. It's the source thing that you originate from. So how do we know our source? We know for believers, our source is Christ. We know for believers, our source is the father. That's who we originate from. So when we know our origin, we can begin to emit or we can begin to produce or we can begin to flow or we can begin to emanate. So Joseph just by virtue of his essence, just by virtue of his presence, just by virtue of who he is, not his condition, his condition was servitude, but his essence was prosperity. Somebody's going to get that today. His condition was servitude, but his essence was prosperity. So Joseph, just by virtue of who he is, is in flow mode. He's already in it. All right. So we know that Joseph's brothers think that they have seen the last of him, right? They said, we're going we're gonna to see what becomes of this dreamer. His brothers think that they have seen the last of him, that they have broken him, that they have disconnected him right from the family. He has been sold by them, but what he's really done or what they've really done is they've helped God to source him out. He's been sold by his brothers, but he's really been sourced out or sent out by God. And so, yes, God will let people think it was their idea. <laughs> God will let people think it was their idea to do what they did in order for his will and his purpose and his overarching eternal counsel and plan to be done for your life. So, yes, God will let people think it was their idea to fire you. He will let them think it was their idea to cut you off. He will let them think it was their idea to betray you. All of that stuff. Hashtag it be your own people sometimes. Okay. But the Holy Spirit said to me, it doesn't matter where you are brought to as long as you know where you were sent from. It doesn't matter where you are brought to as long as you know where you were sent from. And who is in route with you? Is God in route with you? Is God in route with you? Is he on the journey with you? Okay. So what made you come here? <laughs> Many of us will often get that question. If we are sent to a place, somebody is going to eventually ask you, what are you doing here? Why are you here? What made you come here? Okay. And for some of us, we're going to say nobody, no one made me come. I was sent here by God. And that makes all the difference when you know that you're sent to a place and you didn't just come by yourself. You didn't just come on your own. You're not on your own marching orders. You were sent by God. That makes the difference. All right. So the question is, do, did you bring God along for your journey? Potiphar was able to look up at Joseph. For those of you who are coming in, we are um, focusing on Genesis 39 verses 1 through 6. Potiphar was able to look at Joseph and know and see that God was with him. It says, and the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. He wasn't getting ready to be prosperous. He wasn't prosperous because Potiphar made him so. Remember, he's operating in the essence of who he is. His name has already declared who he is. He's going to add the increase. Increase in prosperity is emanating from Joseph. It's on him and Potiphar can see it. All right. So again, it doesn't matter what your condition is as long as you know what your essence is. Joseph was in a position, he was in a condition of servitude, but his essence, the thing that was emanating from him was increase. His captivity did not stop his flow. His captivity did not stop his flow. He didn't have it. He was it. Again, he didn't have prosperity. He was 
prosperity. He literally embodied prosperity. He was, unknowingly to his brothers, obviously, he was the treasury department of the family. He was the treasury department of his family. They literally sent the treasury department of the family on before them. So he was prosperous and he was in the house of his master. Can you stay in the house and learn to be mastered? Uh-oh. Can you stay in the house and still rise? Can you stay in the house and still be elevated? Can you stay in the house and still be promoted? Because he was prosperous and he was in the house of his master. Can you rise above your condition because you know and have learned how to stand in your essence and you have learned how to go with the flow that is coming out of you? I don't care about what kind of chaos is happening around me because I'm learning that as long as I stay in my flow, as long as I stay in what's emanating out of me, peace, calm, and tranquility, I'm going to be all right. And the environment and the atmosphere, it may not shift when I want it to shift. It may not change when I want it to change. But if I stay in my flow, it is going to change. So I want you to think about that today. Learn how to stand in the essence of who you are. Learn how to move with the flow of who you are and what is coming out of you. So his master saw that prosperity was on him. He saw prosperity. It was tangible. There was a tangible evidence. Which leads me to the Holy Spirit's next question for us. When was the last time you didn't have to advertise your flow because it was evident. When was the last time you didn't have to advertise your flow because it was evident? Someone said, I see it. I'm experiencing it. It is rising up and it's flowing out of you. So his master saw that the Lord made all that he did prosper. Key word there, all that he did. <laughs> In other words, there was some action. Joseph was producing something. He was making something. He was creating something. He was organizing. He was arranging. He was communicating. He was speaking. He was calculating. We know these things because he becomes the steward over it. And so God endorses and God promotes and he prospers what you are willing to produce. Where did he see it prosper? Was it just prospering any old place? No, it was prospering in Joseph's hands. Not in the other servants' hands, because we know that he had a whole household full of servants, but it was prospering in Joseph's hands. It wasn't even prospering in Potiphar's hands. It says that he saw that it was prospering in the hands of Joseph. So Potiphar wised up. If it's going to prosper in Joseph's hands, if it's going to prosper in the person who is emanating prosperity, then let me go ahead and put him over it. Because everything that Joseph put his hands in, it began to prosper. So Joseph finds grace. He finds grace because prosperity was on the work and it was evident. He found grace because he chose to serve and not be arrogant. He found grace because he was doing and the work was prospering in his hands question for you. What do you do when you have a dream like Joseph that says that you're called to master? You're called to eventually dominate, but you're not there yet. But your reality says something otherwise. 
What do you do when your dream says you're going to master and you're going to dominate, but your reality says you're a servant? Joseph was able to recognize the moment he was in and he chose to serve. He was appointed. What happens? From the time of that appointment as overseer, God begins to move that increase that is on Joseph and he begins to disperse that increase to the whole house. God begins to cover it all. He saw it, Potiphar saw it in Joseph and he saw it on Joseph and he saw it with Joseph. And because of authority being given, God begins to disperse prosperity on everything. It says that he blessed the house for the sake of Joseph or for Joseph's sake. And so the blessed of God who will become placed in authority began to release the abundance of God even in their captivity. He was captive, but the essence of who he was was not. He was, he was physically held captive, but his mind was not held captive. His relationship with God was not held captive. So Joseph moves from being in the house to being over the house. Here we see today that God's role in Joseph's life is recognized by others. Prosperity is identified by others. His competency is rewarded. Authority has been given and responsibility has been delegated. Joseph is in authority and under it. He doesn't abuse the power that he's been given. He doesn't abuse his power dynamic. He does not lord it over others. He does not exploit his position or the resources that come along with the position that has been laid before him. So I want to encourage you today that no matter what condition you are in, you can emanate who you really are. You can continue to let who God has called you to be, regardless of your position, regardless of your condition, you can begin to let that flow out of you. And as you let that flow out of you, other people will see it. Other people will take notice. You will find yourself being delegated authority, being given positions of authority, even in this hour. So it is time for you to not let whatever seems to be mastering you deter you from emanating and staying in the essence of who you are. That is what I have to share with you all today. Um, apostle is, he's doing okay. All right. So that is what I have to share with you all today. Um, I hope that this has been an encouraging message for you. I know it's certainly been one for me. We are going to continue, as I said, looking into the life of David. We'll be back in Genesis 39 and we'll be looking at, um, Genesis seven through, uh, Genesis 39 verses seven through 23 on uh, next week if you want to go ahead and read that. But today I just encourage you to just emanate, just emanate, flow, allow yourself to flow in who God has called you to be. And as you begin to flow, I believe that the people who need to see what's on you and the people who need to see what's in you will begin to see it and they will move and act accordingly. All right. Father, we just thank you for your goodness today. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness and your truth. Father, let this word settle in the hearts and the minds and the spirit of your people on today. Help them, Father God, to search the scriptures, to seek your face, and to know who they really are. Help them to operate in the truth of who they are and let the essence of who you have called them to be, Father, let that begin to flow out so that it can touch lives, it can transform environments, it can transform mindsets about them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for each and every person that would hear this broadcast. Let it go 
and let it do what you have sent your word to do today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you all so very much. We will see you, Lord willing, on next Sunday. Same place, same time.